right there. You're coming with me. Okay, Santee, get in the jail. Come on. Oh, come on. At least I got the money. Hey, give me that money right now. It's my money, I stole it. I said, give me the money. It's, give me oh, that money. Oh, it won't fit through the bars. Oh, I guess well, I gotta keep it. Give me that money. Hey folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. I'm here with Marshal Chuck Wagon, all the way from California Territory. And this week we're gonna be talking about the Marshal's Office. The Office of the Lawman is one of the most recognizable Western settings. So this week, let's see what we can find out. First off, I struggled with making a video about the Sheriff's Office as opposed to the Marshal's Office. This led me to looking into whether or not there would even be much of a difference in their workplaces. The sheriff had jurisdiction over an entire county, whereas a marshal's ended at the town limits. You could have both, like Tombstone. Sheriff Johnny Behan was the Cochise County Sheriff, and Virgil Earp was town marshal. Yeah, your sister smokes corn silk. Yeah, my, my sister doesn't smoke corn silk. It, uh, she works in a butcher shop and it, it smokes hams. So, the sheriff's office might look similar to the marshal's office. For the purposes of not confusing you, or, uh, me, let's just use Marshall's office. Oh, to further complicate things, there are U.S. Marshals, which are appointed by the President and have a lot more range than the other two law dogs. Yeah, let's not talk about them today or my brain might explode. A Marshall's office was typically placed in a business district. They weren't always standalone buildings. Even a room in a courthouse would suffice. These spaces were usually not that large, with room for a desk or two and a small jail to hold people. Most of the time it held drunks and rowdy cowboys. Some frontier towns didn't even have a jail. Wickenburg, Arizona had its famous tree that the lawmen would shackle malfeasance to. Billy the Kid was shackled to the floor in a courthouse in Lincoln, New Mexico. Yeah, some of these early jail situations and territories were pretty primitive. I would love to say that there are dozens of existing period photos of Law Dog office interiors, but I just haven't found very many. Here's one showing Arizona's Yavapai County Sheriff George Ruffner in his office. The campaign poster and typewriter are interesting additions which puts this photo later in the period. And no, I can't read the date on that darn calendar. Movies, TV, and the occasional museum give us all an idea of these offices and help us piece together what they were like. A scarred desk littered with wanted posters and the spare six gun next to a bottle of whiskey in the side drawer were probably real things. Nobody gonna try and stop me. Nobody. But also copies of tax receipts from what they collected and licenses issued. Yeah, the marshal had a few duties which would earn him extra income while also taking care of frontier tough guys. One thing that stands out in photos in museums is the roll top desk a very practical piece of furniture that had cubbies for the marshal and his deputies to lock important paperwork in. Incidentally, the S-curve desk is a common one for this era. Of course, we would see a heating element for the winter months in the form of a pot-bellied stove and likely a rifle rack. Pretty much every western-themed town has a sheriff or marshal's office where you can enjoy a photo opportunity locked in the Huskow. To those of you who helped me out this week with photos, I certainly appreciate it. Well, Marshal Chuckwagon finally let me out of the Trail Dust Town Jail, and we headed over to watch my friends at the Pistoleros Wild West Show. Their Halloween show features the ghost of Captain Cutthroat accidentally deposited in the Old West during a freak hurricane, delighted the entire audience. Straight in! Thanks for the coffee. Sure. What you doing there, Scooter? You seem to be in a bit of a bind. Well, you know, Marshal Chuckwagon was out here. He locked me in the jail. He let me out to go watch the Pistolero show, but he put me in these. Now he's back in California, and he took the key with him, so. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. I thought I was the only one who did stuff like that to you. Yeah, apparently not, so. Yeah. You know, I, I gotta be honest here. When Chuckwagon left, I saw him before he left. You knew I saw him before he left. Yeah, mm-hmm. So he didn't really take the key with him. He didn't? No, he didn't. Well, well, who's got the key? You have the key? I got the key. Well, unlock me, Dan. Come on. Well, sure. Hang on. Let's talk about this for a second. 
you know that contract negotiations come up and it's time for a little renegotiation. Yeah. Keys are also referred to in this case as leverage. Okay, you got me. Uh, just unlock me and we'll talk. Okay? Just unlock me and then we'll Why don't we talk, then I unlock you? Well, because I talk with my hands, you know. It's sometimes, you know, I move my hands a lot. Could you just unlock me and then we'll, we'll talk about the contract? Okay. You know, you're always trying to pull stuff over on me and get me all going sideways and everything. I would never do anything like that. Come on. Just unlock me and we'll have that contract negotiation. All right? Unlock, 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 unlock. Right there. Uh, nah. What? Oh, that went in the water. I'm sorry. Hey, folks, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on down the trail. Hey, watch out for that snake. We'll see you on down the trail. Hey, watch out for that snake.